I think there's a lot of confusion in any kind of school between I'm training leadership, people are going to go into leadership roles, I'm training people going to management, and I just wondered how you thought about these two things. So what's the same, what's different, how do they overlap? Um, I've always been a little suspicious of the gap that's made between in, in the business literature between management and leadership. Um, because it often leads to one, usually management, being demeaned, right? Like, we don't need managers here. We want leaders here. <laughs> Hold aside that I wouldn't use the term managers and leaders, but people in these roles. Um, it demeans the whole category of work if we could even parcel out what those two are. So I'm suspicious of the, 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 the split or the conceptualization of these two. But if I suspend that suspicion for a moment, I say, okay, what we're talking about here for the moment is, when we talk about management, we're talking about the actual working and operations working of a group. And when we talk about leadership, we're talking about the role that has to do with meaning and external relations, et cetera. Um, then my answer to that is most people I know who work in organizations do both of those things. Mm that in a, a, a leadership managerial role, in a job, supervisor, vice president, nurse, head of nursing, that most people talk about both kinds of activities. They come and they say everything from help me manage my time more effectively, help me do performance appraisal, which I would call operational management things, and they say, I need to inspire these people. I need to find a way to create meaning for the people who are doing this so that their emotional energy is brought to the work, not just their skill. That's, a, that, that's, a, that's partly, if we take this split, that's partly a leadership function, mm -hmm. meaning, uh, inspiration, vision. And I see the vast majority of people that I work with in all levels of organizations struggling with quote unquote leadership issues as well as management issues. So. I'm not sure that there's a meaningful difference for me. I think there's a set of um, uh, work that people in those roles do. And again, if um, I'm faithful to the, to the, um, to the view I'm, I'm uh, talking about today, some people in those roles, supervisor, vice president, are better at some of those things and worse at some of those things, and they can't do it all alone, even the meaning and inspirational part. Um, there are lots of examples of people in leadership roles who weren't terribly inspirational, but somebody who was working mm -hmm. with them provided the uh, meaning and inspiration to the, to the part of the social system or organization they were working in. So given the educational systems we have, people go in one at a time <laughs> and they become educated. Uh, what is your sense of how we could do this better? How could we educate people to understand these as roles and that they will play both roles um, and that they will develop some competence in being able to play these roles? Well, you know, my view is that, we, again, on this, we don't have to work so hard to create opportunities. We just have to um, utilize and mine the opportunities we have. So while it is true, let's take for example undergraduate mm -hmm. um, uh, colleges, it is true that people come in as individuals. They eat, sleep, learn, work together mm -hmm. um, in groups. Um, a classroom is a group. It's a social system. It's often used, it's often then subdivided either for casework or projects or whatever into groups, whether that's um, because it's, it, there's something to be learned from working in groups or it's just efficient in some ways. But the opportunities to use those experiences, dorm rooms, um, uh, t t uh, undergraduate um, uh, organizations, uh, extracurricular, to use all those settings as ways of learning about the self, of ways of learning about other groups, of ways of learning about roles in which one is in a leadership, has leadership responsibility and roles in which one has primarily followership. That's all there, it's all present. And I think what's, um, what's potential in, in places like that is to reflect on and then begin to conceptualize 
um, what those experiences are like and then learn about the self in relationship to doing those different kinds of roles. So I don't think it's, I think it's our orientation to the individual rather than our lack of opportunity to learn about this, uh, these other dimensions that's holding us back. So I can see in schools, you have the technical role of the school, which are all the classes and all the academics. And everything you just described is kind of around that. And I could see in a hospital, you've got the technical, you're trying to take care of patients and do surgery and give the right medications. And there's a lot of other stuff that goes on too. Families come in and there's a lot of, and maybe in most organizations, there's sort of like a technical thing that has to be done. And somehow the way you've described this, it sounds as if, the leadership function or the development of the leadership skills and experience don't come straight from that technical. They, it feels, particularly in schools, that you're saying actually take advantage of all these other things. So my question is, how do we take what I think most people think is the main thing a university or a college is doing or a hospital is the technical stuff. How do we knit these together so that we can develop leadership among people? Well, I would probably argue that, that when your hands went, when you said the technical went like this, mm. and I would say that the technical is actually more like this. Mm. That is, take a hospital. Who's delivering health care? Mm. It's lots of people. Mm. The technical health care. So I have to draw blood, I have to send it to a lab, I have to get or take a photo by a technician, and I have to get it read. So actually, the core activity of the institution is done is by relationships. Mm -hmm. And so there is no way to parse out unless mm -hmm. one is merely an individual craftsperson mm -hmm. making a, a, a silver cup. Mm -hmm. um, even then, I would argue that there's some relationships um, to produce, to get, to provide the silver. But certainly in modern organizations, which are defined by specialization and then the coordination of those specialized functions or tasks, which is, I think, part of what leadership does. You can't have a core task that doesn't have these kinds of coordinated relationships and as part of the mm -hmm. essential core of most or modern organizations. Mm -hmm. Since we left the craft guilds, I think that's, that's what modern organization is. I think that's where we are. And the good news is it means if we turn our attention to it, we can focus on what makes those relationships work better and worse, and what the different people's roles are in making those work better and worse. So you're sort of saying the opportunities are right in front of us, but maybe some organizations don't sort of take advantage of the opportunities that are right there. Right, and I, I think that partly because we're so focused on the individuals, um, we don't lift up our gaze and say, gee, how these individuals function is influenced heavily by the relationships that they find themselves mm -hmm. in. Now we know that, most of us know how important relationships are to our own creativity, produ productivity, performance, but somehow when we get into organizations, we tend to focus on individuals. Well, I have to say I'm really interested in how you frame this because the first three things are so difficult to do <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you sort of recommended to really know you've got to do this with other people and know your own weaknesses and think through your own biases. Those are all so complicated and then you are comforting to say the opportunity to do something about this is right in front of us all the time. The opportunity to think of more than our individual technical role but that it is de facto already in relationship, and how do we learn from that? If we have a moment, my, my most comforting thought to myself, yeah. as well as to others, is that it is precisely our limitations and weaknesses that make possible the kinds of productive relationships between mm -hmm. those in leadership roles and followership roles, mm -hmm. that actually our limitations and weaknesses are the opportunity. When I ask a workshop of people if they've ever been in a relationship with a boss, who meaningfully revealed to them a limitation or weakness for, who, for which they needed this subordinate to contribute his or her expertise. And a bunch of hands go up. I say, how many people felt more connected to that relationship as a result of that disclosure? All the hands go up. Mm -hmm. I've done mm -hmm. this a thousand times. There may be two hands that say that people felt less loyal, committed, involved, and engaged. And so I think the comforting thing is actually in spite of our terror and fear, <laughs> the more we can do this, the more we create relationships that are, that are not only effective but more committed and more meaningful. Hmm. I think you've given us a huge amount to think about and I hope we can do this again. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who's been joining. Uh, we hope that this has been helpful and maybe the first of several such sessions.